We Starting, don't... I'm recording. Okay. Uh. You got something to say? We're recording now? Yeah. All right. So <laughs> we're in the new old Bohemia called Soho. Soho, New York City, not Soho, London. We're south of Houston and north of uh, the world. And I'm here with Steve Dalachinsky and Yuko Otomo. And uh, these are all around Bohemians, and uh, they're not square. And uh, they've been around a long time. And uh, how long would you say you left the mainstream? Left or was kicked out? Uh, yeah, as a, as a good friend of both of us, Ted Jones always called me, uh, called me a son of a beat. Son of, of a beat. Son of a beat. Uh, son of the Beats, something like that. When did we leave the fringe? I mean, the uh, so social uh, order of things? I'm fucking this up already. Anyway, we will... I left it a very, very long time ago. I was forced out of it uh, against my will when I was very young. And um, um, What do you mean forced out? You mean forced to take a job? No, was I was... Uh, when I was very, very young, I was taken out of the mainstream because people thought my behavior was... Uh, too irrational for the mainstream, although uh, I can never figure out how irrational it really was. But um, so once I l was taken out of the mainstream, then I left. Uh, when I left, I started to meet other people oh, who were very young 13, 14, 15. Yeah, that's that. when I, I left too. 20. Yeah. And you, you? When I guess, you know, like anybody, all of us, like I was always uh, alienated in the mainstream although I was very I was very good at almost faking it and everything but uh, I guess like 15 16 was this in America or in, in Japan, in, in yeah, Japan. Yeah, yes of course and but I stayed in the system but my mind was already growing into the completely different direction uh, and so and my parents are pretty radical so they they didn't force me to stay in the mainstream way of thinking. He, they kind of encouraged me to be who I am. So that was uh, if, if you were to make an evaluation, would you say it's easy? I know it's a broad generalization yeah. of 300 million people. And mm -hmm. What's the population of Japan? Uh, 80 million? I, I, right. I used to remember. So, so do, you, do you think it would, it, was, it would be easier for an American than for a Japanese to do what you did? Oh. Or you can't tell? I can't tell because there are lots of people who did what I did in, right? even in Japan all, right. all through the history and uh, uh, but mo like once I wrote a poem like most of my mentors uh, like uh, went crazy or they committed suicide and th that's the Japanese basic tradition of all the great outsider thinkers and writers and artists lots of people committed suicide or they died here, here, here out of we kill them <laughs> so, uh, so don't have to during the war they did a red charge and they killed lots of people but after that, or before that, lots of people kill themselves, like, you know, Dazai, Akutagawa, even Mishima, all those people kill themselves, or they die out of mainly consumption, TB, you know, they, they just yeah. sh shrivel into, and they, so I had two choices, of course, <laughs> I wanted to kill myself for a long time, I wrote yeah. a poem about that too, and yeah. I was getting kind of sick, I was pretty sick when I was young, because of uh, this malfunctioning uh, adjustment to the world. So when I came to New York, I felt like when I saw you or Steve and Selma, I felt uh, relieved, like I'm not crazy. Right. <laughs> well, you are crazy, but there's I'm lots crazy. of other yeah, crazy. Everyone like a, is crazy. We're all crazy yeah, in our everyone. own way. That's right. Yeah. We're all uh, crazy right. in our own way. In a way. confirmed, a confor uh, confirmed. Not even, sense. well, the conforming people are the craziest. They're the total the crazy people. Because and we see where they brought us now yeah. to uh, the, dis the potential dissolution of human life on the mm -hmm. planet. Mm. These are all our great leaders and uh, uh, people that were held up to us. And uh, once you get the idea, we rem you remember that America was never a democracy and it's built on a tissue of lies. Mm -hmm. I'll just cite one example, but uh, there are many, there are thousands. George Washington, the father of this country, who fought to free everybody. When he did that, he owned 218 slaves. That's America. I could go on for a list for, for the whole program. 
That's America to, to me. me. Ouch, I live in the roaches. No, the roaches are okay. Yeah, my roaches it's too. The they landlords. kind of split it. The neighborhood's too rich it's for the, the landlords roaches now. we got to watch out mm. for. But I, the roaches think they're in a forest. That yeah. this is a, a hollow tree. They, they've been here before us. Actually, it's talking about might, roaches? And roaches. They, are, and they might be here. And they might be here after, after us. I All think right, they so, split to the Lower East Side. So what would you like, how would you like to uh, shape this program? Well, first I'd like to say I think it's interesting that um, all through history, uh, our, our leaders have led us down the wrong roads. So I, I and uh, America, unfortunately, has become a prime example of it. I'd also like to say that what Yuko was talking about, in Japan particularly, people don't off themselves that much anymore. But what's really interesting, in America, people off themselves more than ever. Yeah, want, like the right. guys who fight the in Iraq, there's more guys who kill right. themselves who right. fight in I right. Iraq that are actually killed by the other guys or friendly fire. And, and then, we have, then we have a lot of young kids in America who kill themselves because they take acne medication or uh, antidepressants and the side effects, uh, as I wrote in a poem once, uh, suicidal thoughts and suicide. So, uh, yeah, I think Japan's kind of straightened itself out when it comes but, to that. Uh, but the stockholders make money on that. They do. They do. Particularly <laughs> on the acne medicine. And right? uh, when Vioxx had killed 50,000, it still advertised. It was, it was permitted to come back again. And when they advertised on TV, I heard them say, of course there is some risk, but let your uh, physician decide what you should do. And the physicians love this because they keep telling you, ask your doctor. So the, the doctors make money, uh, are advertised free on the radio. Mm -hmm. And this is a great country which, uh, the only Western country that doesn't have uh, some kind of socialized medicine. Anyway, I, before I start anything, it's kind of a little bit uh, silly, but I want to tell people whatever, or Tuli. Tuli is one of those people I'm really completely in, in love with. <laughs> That's yeah. true, because... I just joined him up. No, <laughs> because he, Tuli is one of those people, I when I moved to New York, Steve introduced me because he was standing on the corner of Spring and West Broadway selling his newsletters. Uh, price like a dollar ninety four or dollar twenty seven or strange price newsletter and Steve introduced me to Tuli and you know now then I learned about the fox which I didn't know anything about when I was in Japan and so then when I was really kind of like uh, uprooted and uh, uh, unsettled here in the beginning of my New York life I listened to morning morning and that really saved me from committing suicide. <laughs> so he's like, he's very, very important because uh, in many, many deep ways, uh, Tuli is one of those people who is, his principle of his life is in, in a complete wholesome sense, it's right here. The way he dresses, the way he talks, the way he, who he is. N none of those fake people, partially, you know, the partial whatever. He's a complete person, and he's never changed in a, the most profound way. He's never changed since I've known him. So uh, I just love to tell Tui, I love you. So, uh, <laughs> Jesus well, Christ, you uh, all that to well, get on the air for 28 wait, minutes. Yeah. Tui, no, wait, wait. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 I'll just tell uh, a story, then we'll, get, yes. then we'll get back to you. Tui, come right. about show. 10 minutes, 18 minutes to go. All right, yeah, 18, 18 minutes Wells already. said that. 10 minutes already. God, we didn't even do nothing. All we talked yes. about is death right. and destruction. No, H.G. Wells said that advertising mm -hmm. is legalized lying. So just remember that. She's an ex-advertising person, Thelma Blitz, at behind the camera there. And um, I did do a, I, I, I invented a, 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 a useful path in advertising when I was selling my stuff on the street. Yes, sir. It was a dollar for one and two for 99 right. cents. Oh, that's okay, so, so let's mm -hmm. yeah. let's get to your okay. poetry while we, while we a dollar for one and two for ninety nine cents. I always thought it was. Uh, I just remember the strange number. Right, <laughs> it was. I thought I thought it, you were charging. 
less for one and more for two. That was. But do you know what? what? Actually, when I when I wanted to buy them, and one for he said cents? You, you gave it to them for free. Yeah, two for ninety-nine. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. one for a dollar. Yeah, you two gave me a few different, very few different uh, issues for free. <clears throat> well, getting to the issues. But what do you want us to do now? Well, you the intellectual. Sing. Okay. You're, You're poets, poets, aren't you? I was going to dance around. Say anything. I want to show everybody. This is a um, this is a book that came out recently. Um, and Let then me see it. Show the this camera. This is a beat up copy because that's my reading. Is that your book? Yep, that's my reading copy of it's the book. It's called The Final Night. Final Night. This is a beat up it's, reading copy. So all your poems. Mm. Well, so, not all my poems. These are poems particularly for one jazz musician written over a period of 19 years. Which jazz musician? His name is Charles Gale. He's a saxophonist mm -hmm. and pianist, a very avant-garde guy. He's from New York, right? He's from, well, he's originally from Buffalo, New York, and he's he, lived he in Manhattan a long time, Lower East Side. He was homeless for a long time, and now he's uh, got a great place to stay, luckily. Mm -hmm. And um, so this was 19-year labor, and then it recently won this award, which is uh, called a... 2007 Penn Oakland National Book Award. Now, the reason I'm showing you this isn't to brag, it's to show you that, you know, this award, which comes with this little sticker, uh, I've been sticking this on lots of books uh, around town uh, in my own silent protest to show that winning the award. What does the sticker say? I can't see. It says 2007 Penn Oakland. Let me see if I can focus in it. Show me the. Right, 2007 Penn Oakland Award. award. Okay, Book this award. is a very well, prestigious. We want to tell everyone that. Why are you sticking it on a lot of books? Well, because I found out after winning the award, uh, if the press doesn't help you once you got the award and nothing else happens, that you can just go around and stick this on pornography magazines <laughs> or anything. Because in the long run, I stuck it on an Albert Isla CD and so uh, <laughs> poetry reader. Because it, it actually. I was happy to get the award, but then realized, like almost any other achievement in life, uh, it doesn't mean all that much. Well, but, we want to uh, remind but everyone, I everyone yeah. to see that. It's kind of an anarchist. Uh, is a, a, a factor, an important factor in the jazz community of America. He's uh, written the liner notes for many records. True. He's, uh, he's everywhere. There's jazz and uh, He's a jazzy guy. He wouldn't be a drummer. Right. right. <laughs> Which, bef just He's one more useless plug, uh, this is, uh, to follow Thule's thoughts, this book was written, uh, listening over 19 years, the first book, for one musician. The second book, which just came out less than two weeks ago. What's it called? It's called Logos and Language. You wrote that? It's a collaboration with a musician named uh -huh. Matthew Shipp, a pianist. Uh -huh. It contains uh, a dialogue with him and an interview with him that I conducted and poems I wrote listening to him play music and some wonderful photographs taken by someone named Lorna Lentini. And what makes the book interesting is one of the interviews is about his feelings toward the Black Panthers and his dad was a... Uh, an African-American policeman in Washington during that time, and Matthew was a barely born. So Matthew's take on the Black Panthers and how his father, yeah. as a policeman, treated the Panther situation, which was very favorable, actually, uh, one as a policeman and two as a African-American, uh, was interesting. And the second dialogue, Matthew and I get into some weird stuff about uh, mysticism, because he's a semi uh religion in a very strange way you know uh you know like he says things like why would somebody believe that god can we say dirty words on no that? okay no. why god would have stooped, clean clean up the words why god would have stooped a 13 year old jewish virgin and how such a thing was possible so it's a that's a really in interesting uh Think so that goes along with what Tuli said about my involvement with jazz, but Tuli I'm babbling too much. We, we want we we to do the how much time we've got? Uh, 15 minutes, so we've well, got 13 minutes to go. 13 minutes to go, yeah. Well, not a really nice poem from both you of you. Want to read a couple of poems? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then you. All right, Yuko. I just Yuko is a poet, also. Yuko, yeah, I'm Yuko Otomo. Yeah, but, uh, 
because I, I'm not good at so-called business of being a painter. Yeah. I don't know how to show my work, so my works are not really shown. Well, you're shown. showing it now. But I read, uh, uh, as a poet, I, I occasionally read in public. But anyway, one of the poems, I, I picked this particular piece uh, for Tuli, but I, this piece is a bit long, so I just pick a few parts. Uh, it's a little piece called uh, for August Sanders. Uh, he is a photographer who took the, the people portrait of the people of the early century, 20th century, so how the people haven't changed. So I pick a few parts. This is a part B. Work, uh, work types, physical and intellectual. Shipyard workers and carpenters look less disheveled and tortured than a trio of revolutionaries. County workers and communist leader, they both look like schoolmasters with a hidden trait of oppressed sexuality. Dark, stern, and direct, a painter's eyes do not wait for go from a cameraman. Drunk in the realm of structural tonality and ma mathematics, composers proudly and sadly sit alone. Naturally, businessmen and politicians hide the most and the worst of themselves under their well-tailored coats. And it goes on and goes on and goes on this and it's okay. it. yeah, yeah no, I just want nice. to give a little touch and then maybe one one piece out of this okay the small poem uh, okay you go made the beautiful cup let you go now is this a collage uh, this or a is a, a little non press uh -huh. press called a Sisyphus press uh -huh. uh, uh, very nice yes. You know, like I said, where would you get it? Where do you, we, where do you, <coughs> where do you, I poetry <laughs> <meeting? coughs> Where do you get it? Handmade and uh, has, has made. I picked the perfect one for Tuli. This is a collection of my small, my t tiny poems called Small Poems. Trading. You took my belt, it was 50 cents, you know. Life, and it was nothing. Okay, so nasty. Uh, that's it? Yeah. yeah. You don't, you don't a, write haiku usually. I do write do. haiku. You yeah, do. Uh, but yeah. I didn't prefer to read a haiku. Okay. Yes. All right. Steve now. Well, this I'm going to read Steve. another piece from this poem Yuko just started to no, read. No, to. Naturally, businessmen and politicians hide the most and the worst of themselves <laughs> under their well-tailored coats. I mean, now a lot of them like to uh, wear dungarees because they're so... For, yeah, for two hundred dollars. Yeah, two hundred dollars. Sometimes four hundred dollars. They're exhausted pants. I like the way they're uh, worn out. Uh, they're, they're what do they call it? Pre -exhausted. Yeah, pre-exhausted. Pre pants. Pre-exhausted pre pants. Pre -exhausted pre -exhausted yeah. Not like us, just pre-exhausted people, huh? <laughs> we were born exhausted. We were born exhausted. Uh, okay, you know, like uh, like the pig, I usually am. I brought lots of stuff. I was going to read from the books, but I, I think what I'm going to read first is. I'm not going to read from the books, actually. I'm going to read the newest piece, which I never even looked at after I wrote it. It's from, it, the title is from something Yuko said when uh, a guy uh, sitting at an outdoor cafe tried to get the waiter's attention, and he said hello in a very ugly way. And Yuko yes. said, when hello can be ugly sometimes. Yeah, for, the way he said hello was one of the... Hello! Ugly. Hello! <laughs> hello! <laughs> you're drafted! Yeah, you're right. Hello, you're dead. We need you. <laughs> America's calling. We're calling you. Oh. <laughs> when hello can be ugly. When hello can be ugly, a false step at the summit, a hiss of pure logic, an awakening from the un underworld. Hello? Yes, hello can be ugly. When hello can be ugly, a false step, a hiss of pure logic, an awakening from the underworld, the way an impatient customer tries to ensnare the waiter, get his attention, for another glass of wine at an outdoor table of a cafe, fat, slobby, must remain politically correct here. A blank, blank of a customer, a bit swishy like a bad translation. One bed, two beds, or a double bed. Hello? 
Hello, he said, stuck in the dark alley. Not like wisteria symmetrically covering the building's facade, thick smelling, powerful purple growth crossing the roof, getting lost within the fat, the architecture of tunnel or forest, as ugly as a husky bum. The way answering the telephone sometimes. Hello? 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 The way lender addresses borrower. Hello, do, do you remember what you owe me? Or hell is low, as Sabir would say. Hell, H-E-L-L-O, as the wristwatch stops and the indiscriminate meeting on the staircase, half up or half down, disarming one's manner of speech or trying not to see who's coming down the street at you right now in front of you and passing you, composite, defined speech. Can hello be said of fine language? <laughs> Unsparing caresses, hello. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. In a small room shuffling about all five of my senses, leaving out the pleasantries, that's when hello can be ugly, really ugly. Hello? Um, I, I haven't heard it. What do you say? <laughs> you say, when you say hello, I say goodbye. <laughs> you say hello. It is. Steve used to write, I mean, he, he used to read every poem he wrote, but now we don't, we kind of don't do that. Anymore. I say goodbye. Yeah, you know, and then there's other funny things, like this was a couple I wrote when I was in Paris a few years ago. Uh, I visited Père Lachaise, and, uh, or Père Lachaise, or Chaise Lounge, however you say it, where they're all buried. Chaise. Chaise, and Père Lachaise, and uh, I saw that Richard Wright is cremated, in, and uh, he's in Père Lachaise, and there's a little, when you cremate most people, there's this little square in uh, uh, Richard Wright's was right near the staircase going up to the second tier. And this is, was a description of how Richard Wright's little square was as I walked up the steps and noticed Richard Wright stuck between the staircase and the wall. Richard Wright stuck in the corner by the staircase in black face and gold letters with cobwebs. 52 years and exiled native son. Oh, black boy, I place a paper flower beside your square. I mean, he had cobwebs on his square and everything, so I stole some fake flowers from the... the Even after death. Him. Even <laughs> after death. And, you know, I didn't. I knew he was young. I didn't know he was 52, so... Yeah. Uh, he Richard, wrote haiku. He wrote a whole book the of haiku. At the end of his life, he wrote tons of haikus, and they're, they're, they're very good. And he we really finally did. got the book somewhere here. Right, Richard Wright, it's very The problem here. we have is... Uh, we can't read anything, because we, we have to keep piling the shit Everything up. is piled up. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Richard so, Wright wrote uh, a tons of haiku. He wrote a haiku a day for many years. He wrote thousands of haiku, and his, his yeah, daughter published very, a book about two years ago. They're very traditional haiku, but they're very, very good, very, yeah. good, very good. You want to hear some? <laughs> you want to read something else, you? Oh. Or you want to? Uh, no, we'll just if you want to walk around the house, that's okay. Yes. Wait, no, no, no. I'd rather hear. Let's. Uh, I'm just. Uh, okay. Just these are it. these are three semi-dirty poems. Maybe but I should really read right. dirty. Uh, all right. Okay. We can't be one? too. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, they're not dirty like that. All right. This was in, uh, in one of the apartments we stayed in Paris. There was a courtyard, and there was literally a chick who did all these things out her window so like the uh, Hitchcock movie I call them rear window you find something and then I'll get these through these real quick rear window number one I've been writing more experimentally lately so it's interesting to read uh, you know like this uh, one about the uh, whatever that was the ugly one it's kind of mixed bag of things but these are these are very straightforward rear window number one She's in her underwear. She's fixing the curtain. She just took a shower. She's vacuuming the house. She's talking on the phone. Finally, that stool is occupied. She smokes with her left hand while doing the dishes with her right. She has a tattoo above the left cheek of her ass. She has blonde hair, dresses well, has a bicycle, stays up late. It's hot. It's August. The room is empty. Rear window two. 
The girl across the sunlit alley stands half naked by her window most mornings. The sparrows are elongated and aggressive. It's late afternoon. She's wrapped in a towel. The curtain stops fluttering. She rests the towel on the window ledge. The towel says, lucky strike. Rear window three. Up early, clouds downpour, clouds vacuuming, washing floor, making love almost an hour, biting, fingering, playing around, torturing, exasperating breasts. I tell her to keep her clothes on, I naked, she more orgasms, wine, me thrust gently into her wine-filled mouth, she drinks, swallows, naked I rise. The girl across the way is drying her hair in the sun, she's been to the beach, somewhere where it's warm, no rain. She sips her coffee, shakes out her towel, sniffs her duffel bag. Our lovemaking has cleared the air. Oh. <laughs> okay, I read. Those were the I days, mean, huh, baby? Yeah. <laughs> when we were still young. Yeah. <laughs> Hunger. Today, I saw some people eating pretzels. Three merely chattering women blocked our way. We do not particularly feel sorry for missing things. That, we by the way, was Yuko's minutes. first major yeah. book, which I love dearly. <laughs> oh, great. It two sold out minutes. real, yes. what, sold out real quickly, and then the goddamn... See, this is my major book. Same Let's goddamn see, publisher. Up, same What's damn publisher. Oh. I offered them money to oh, read, stop, to read, put no the complaint. book back out, and they wouldn't do it. You miss... Okay, General Botany. I love oh, plants. So. General Botany. General Botany. Okay. All you need is air, water, and slight light, night and day, all around. Love, well, that's it. <laughs> okay, we have uh, uh, two more, two more minutes. Love, well. Maybe you should so cool. All right, come on, come on, say, come something. On. say something, something. Cool. Say something. Tell me, right, circle around. Right. Right. These well, people are married, right? You're married, married yes. poets, yes. right? How long have you been married? Long time. Long time. Too long. More than two decades. So that's, for sure. that's amazing. Too long. Right. Yes. We're like two little kids, right? <laughs> so, two little uh, babies. Get a shot of all the junk, though. I did. did. I got some Good. of it. Let's get some of the jazz. You, you must have an immense jazz collection. It's not all you jazz records. You used to records, sell vinyl but, records. Uh, yeah. yeah. Amazing, amazing collection of wall-to-wall -wall books and records. There's no Terrific uh, library. Wall all very well <laughs> organized. Just something just now. And very nice. Okay, we have just a couple of min okay, more minutes. Really so you want to say close, goodbye? Close, uh, Let's say goodbye. Bohemia lives. What? Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the well-organized remark, Thelma. We can't find a thing, though, anywhere anymore. <laughs> yeah. Anywhere in the world. It's so have nice you you're still in New York. Uh, do you have a... a we can't afford to leave. Yes.